Hello, this is Daniel from soundheadquarters.com. In today's video, we are building these eight acoustic panels from my own personal apartment, and I did a quick before and after sound comparison so you can hear the difference. Here's how the room sounds before acoustic panels. Check, check, check. Test, 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 test. Check. So to start by building these acoustic panels, we're going to start with our lumber. We are using two by two by eight lumber. And first we're going to cut our long pieces. These are cut at 48 inches. Uh, so we just cut these eight foot lengths of lumber in half to get our left and right sides of the acoustic panel. Now we're going to cut our tops and bottoms. These are cut at 27 and a quarter inches. And I'm letting my saw blade take away my pencil mark. So the final dimension of this is just under 27 and a quarter inches. That little bit of extra wiggle room just allows the acoustic insulation to fit inside the frame nicely. So now we're just going to assemble the frame. I'm screwing them together using three inch construction screws and I am pre-drilling to make sure the wood does not split when I drive those screws in. And I'm also using the ground as a guide for my drill to keep my screws closer to me away from the front face of the panel that's on the floor. So that way the screws do not interfere with the router right here. So here is the router table. I'm using a 45 degree chamfer bit. This is what gives my panels that nice 45 degree beveled edge. So we are going to run these frames, making sure that the side with the screws is facing up and is not going to interfere with the router bit. So I do two passes per side. The first pass gets rid of the majority of the wood. And then the second pass just makes sure that the cut is nice and clean and consistent. Now we're just going to go ahead and sand off any sort of tooling marks just to make sure there's no splinters or burrs that are going to get caught on the fabric when we upholster these panel frames. So just going around with um, using an 80 grit, uh, sometimes you use 120 grit. Uh, so here we're going to be working on the rear upholstery. So I'm just using a standard uh, poly cotton fabric here for the rear side of my panels. So just cutting them to size here and then I'm getting them stapled in. I'm using T50 staples. I'm using a pneumatic stapler to save time, but when I first started, I was using just a handheld T50 stapler. Anything that's strong enough to get those staples into the wood will work. And just trimming off the excess there. And now we're ready to add our acoustic insulation. So we are using Rockwool Comfort Board 80. This is what's available to us here in Canada. Uh, depending on where you are in the world, you may want to use a different product, um, but the principles all still apply. Here is our front fabric. This is a two-tone wool blend. So I'm just getting that cut to size, making sure I have enough room extra on both sides to fold the fabric over. Then I'm just getting that acoustic insulation put inside the frame. You can see that just press fits right in uh, because the interior dimension of these panel frames is exactly two feet by four feet. And that little extra bit of wiggle room that we did when we cut our 27 and a quarter inch just allows for that insulation to slide in the frame nicely. Now we're going to go ahead and get the front fabric stapled in. This requires a little bit of finesse. I'm going to put a link somewhere here for more in-depth upholstery videos. I have lots of videos on my channel showing the upholstery process. Uh, but essentially we are just stretching the fabric, making sure everything lies nice and flat and flush. And that way all of our trimming and folds are on the rear side of the panel where they won't be visible. Uh, for the end user. So there's the finished panels and we can go ahead and get ready to install these uh, in my personal apartment here. So the very first thing that's going to go onto these panels is our flush mount hangers. Uh, these are just standard flush mounts. Um, I get them here at Lowe's in Canada, but I'm sure you can find an equivalent wherever you are in the world. Here is my living room slash little modest uh, production setup there um, in beautiful Port Credit, Mississauga. Uh, here in Canada. Uh, so you can see we are starting off with bare walls. I do have all of my flush mount hangers already installed uh, from previous panels and let's get into the before audio test. Here's how the room sounds before acoustic panels. Check, check, check. Test. So as you can hear, lots of resonance, lots of decay time in the room. So we're just gonna go ahead and get these panels hung. And that exact same flush mount hanger that we screwed into the panel is screwed into the wall 
in the opposite orientation so that the panels just hook right into the flush mount and then you can just level the panels. So there is the eight panels installed in my living room here. And we're gonna do the after sound test now, just so you can get an idea of the before and after comparison of a decay time. Here's how the room sounds after acoustic treatment. Test, 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 check. Check, check, check. Test, 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 check. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe for more studio building content. This has been Daniel. Peace out.